Um, an easy way of identifying value streams and trying to think of your organization in terms of value streams is trying to understand where your customers are and working backwards. So wherever there's a customer, there's a value stream. There is a way that that customer receives value or else there wouldn't be a customer of yours. So um, you can work backwards from a customer to try and understand where the value stream is and what the value stream looks like. But an important thing to note is that it's not just external customers that are customers in, in a value stream uh, ecosystem. You also have an internal value streams. So you'll have, and I'll explain what these look like and, and some examples, but um, you also have internal customers just like you have external customers. And there are folks inside the organization who derive value from value streams uh, because you know they have things that they need they have um, they have responsibilities they have things that they expect they rely on different aspects of the organization uh, for value that allows them and enables them to produce their own value for customers and you can have multiple internal value streams that serve uh, a single external value stream or many external value streams but there's always a customer and that's the one thing that differentiates a value stream from a process. A process doesn't necessarily have a customer. Uh, a process could be entirely automated and just serve to produce an outcome or an output. Um, but a value stream is really in the context of, of value. And that affects how we look at it and, and what we consider when we're trying to understand the value stream. And I'll get into that as well. So working backwards from a customer outcome is an easy way of identifying a value stream. And uh, there's an excellent book that I highly recommend called The Great Transition from 1995 by a uh, man by the name of James Martin. And I don't think it, I have this book available to show you, but uh, it is here. Uh, he identified 17 core value streams um, and they're kind of useful as a, as a reference. Things like um, things like legal review or hiring uh, new staff can be sort of internal value streams with internal customers. And then of course, you know, you'll have like um, shipping and receiving and things like this. A lot, of, a lot of your typical activities can be thought of in terms of a value stream because they have a customer outcome and there's a distinct flow of activities. Um, so wherever you have a, uh, a customer, you have a value stream, but the beginning of that value stream could be any number of activities as well. It could come from an idea that somebody has, it could be something that's distinctly uh, requested by a customer can start a value stream. It could even be uh, an incident that happens, right? If there's a if there's a fire in a warehouse, that could trigger a value stream where you know the resolution of that process is a customer getting value. Uh, probably not fighting that fire. I mean, you could you could really think about resolving that that specific issue as a, as a value stream, although that's um, probably not a repeated and standardized activity to the extent of like manufacturing a product. But certainly. Um, like the process or, or flow of the insurance that factors in once there's an incident is a very distinct value stream.